Mango Seven Will here. How are we doing today? Welcome to another episode of Epic Seven. Today we're gonna steal a video from Schizophrenic Gamer. Uh, he did one recently that I just loved. It was a um, uh, a look at an old tier list in Summoner's War, and I've been thinking about doing this for a while since stuff has changed so much. I thought it would be pretty interesting to look. Um, and then I was browsing Reddit and I saw somebody stole that from him and posted it on Reddit. So why not just do a little big circle, you know, and end up right here. So let's talk about this. This is uh, the initial tier list. I think this was in quotes the most popular one when the game first came out. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how things have changed. Uh, obviously, we have a ton of stuff um, that has been improved and, and changed, like... A bunch of people have been changing buff, like uh, Judge Kisei here. We've seen like Crimson Armin coming around. Um, and then there's been different game modes like Raid. Uh, there's also been Guild Wars and stuff like that. So let's kind of take a look. So first off on their tank list, their number one tank class was Crimson Rose. And honestly, like at the time it was pretty much true. We didn't really have the gear to take advantage of the speed. Uh, she's kind of dropped a lot now. Like, I never, ever, ever see her in arena anymore. Um, and when I do see her in boss, I think I see her in, like, Banshee B B11, like, speedruns. And that's about it. So it's kind of funny to see uh, her up there at number one. But it super made sense because at the time, she was fantastic. Like, she was so good to have. Um, I'm also, like, looking at the top two and laughing at Athena right now because um, these were, like, Athena's first two ML uh, summons were Brawler Ken and Crimson Rose. Uh, so next up we have Armin. And to me, it's kind of funny. World is even really a thing, you know? Like, th there, there's really no need for anybody on, on the world, like, anybody special. Maybe Vildred is the only one that should have, like, the farming uh, sub-tag or whatever like that. But let's be real. World just doesn't really matter. Um, but anyways, S plus and Arena still stand strong. I think it's still probably going to stand strong um, after the nerf. I think as of right now, she's basically still one of the best units, if not, like, the best unit in the game right now. Um, and as for bosses, I've never really seen her used in PvE, but I don't really see many other people's PvE teams. Uh, so next up, we have Arming. And, um, yeah, she's about the same. I mean, S for boss, I guess. I, I guess. Uh, she's kind of just not used, but I don't think it's because she's bad. Like, I think she's got a pretty decent skill set, but um, S minus, I feel, is kind of kind of going a little too much. Now we're getting into the others here. And we have Tywin. And Tywin's always been in one of those, like, iffy spots. I think the problem with Tywin is he's not Crow. You know, like it's so hard to be somebody when you've got Crow. Not only is he like the best husbando ever, he's got the best personality ever. Um, he stole my Kyrus Molagoras. Everything about Crow is like just the best. But Tywin is there, like doing kind of his thing. I actually do like him better than a lot of other units, but I just don't think he's like exceptional at anything. Uh, so, honestly, most of these so far are half right. I never really agree with tier lists at all anyway, but it's fun to read and look. Uh, we then have Rose, and, um, wow, I see Arrowell up there with A's, and <laughs> we know that's not right. Uh, so Rose is up there too. I do think Rose had a spot for the time at the start, but once people started getting better and faster, it's just not a thing we really do right now. She's also one of the worst actual tanks, in quotes, for Wyvern. Um, kind of same goes with Pylus. There's just no reason to use her, I think. Uh, so, like, I don't know if I would give these A's, but they're not terrible. So, like, I don't know what I would give them. That said, Arrowell is flat out terrible. So, I, I feel like Arrowell should be at the bottom. Um, in no way has she done anything worthwhile outside of protect somebody. And I guess that kind of deserves or something, but you can't really, like, give them bonus points for story, you know? Or, like, the cute smile they have. Um, Charlotte, I feel, is in the same spot. Honestly, like, I'm a little, um, impressed with this so far. Like, so far, it seems mostly right, but at the same time, they're just throwing everybody an A. Like, it doesn't matter, um, who you are, you're an A, that's your job, uh, so far from this list. Uh, Charlotte, Crozet, and Raz. Kind of surprised Raz is up here. Crozet doing his stuff, too. Again, only really see him for boss stages. Maybe he could be a little higher for boss because he's so specialized for Wyvern 11. Um, but overall, that's about it. 
Then we have Clurry, and Clurry, ah, uh, at the start of the game, she wasn't too good, and then she shot up to, like, triple S, and now she shot back down, so, um, kind of funny to see where she is now, and the lowest rank is B, that's just so weird to me. Uh, Maya's kind of the same, there's really no reason to use her. I think one of the big problems with Maya is she's sitting there next to Ken, she's sitting there next to the dude right to the right of her, um, she just has never had her time to shine. That said, ranking uh, Fighter Maya below Raz is just like, really? And I mean, I understand there was no real Guild Wars back then, but she was still a great bruiser for um, Arena. Uh, so that's kind of funny seeing her all the way down there. Um, so let's go back up here. We've got Warrior Class. We're now looking at Brawler Ken. I love how he doesn't even have like an S ranking. They just call him OP. Uh, in true, true Korean fashion. I assume this was made by uh, the Korean uh, group. And we have boss for S+, plus, arena OP, world OP. I mean, you can't really argue with that at the start of the game. And honestly, he's still kind of up there. Maybe not for boss, but for arena and everything, like, I wouldn't really call him OP, but he he's up there. Seeing General Purgus here is kind of surprising, too. I, I never really saw people use him at the start of the game. But I understand, like, how good he is. Seeing him there for boss, who doesn't really make any sense. Uh, for Rina, I can definitely, definitely understand now. And then we've got Judge Kisei, and this makes sense too. OP for Arena, and then um, kind of whatever for everything else. And ah, Wolven Kartuha, our, our long-lost uh, PvP brethren here. This guy has just been a thorn in basically everybody's side since day one, I think. Um, especially once Arena and Guild War came out. Like, I don't know how good he is or where I would rank this little guy. Or big guy, I guess I should say, considering he's called Fat Cat. But I have to admit, he's just one of the overall best characters. You can bring him versus anybody. He helps any team survive. He helps any team kill. And he's a great, like, 1v1-er at the end of the day when everybody else is dead. So, pretty great there. And then we have Ravi here with S+, plus for World. Make sure you reroll for Ravi because she's the best. Um, yeah, I think she's a little worse than this, but I'm not sure anymore with the changes. Uh, we have Secret, or also known as Secret here. Maybe I should start reading their names. Um, Secret S minus for world. See, like, I don't even think I should read world. Like, that just doesn't mean anything. Um, and the funny part is Vildred's probably going to be, like, an A or a B for, for world. Uh, Arena, okay. Boss is pretty good. I do agree with this. This is actually a pretty fair assessment of her. And also, this is when, um, there was no Kisei. There was no Luna, you know? So she definitely did stand out at the start. We also have Clarissa here, lower rank than Secret for World, which is kind of weird. But I, I do think she's been okay. She was actually used as a cleaver for Arena. I still remember the first couple weeks um, you'd be against a, a team with just Clarissa and you would die. Um, I still have people complaining to me. There, I still remember people complaining to me way back when being like, I lost to the stupid nun with this stupid mace. Like, I still remember those PMs. Um, and that was, that was Clarissa for sure. Ah, and then we have Axe God. And Axe God was actually an Axe God before his changes. So that's kind of cool to see him up here. And also kind of cool to see Lorena here as well. They've both been kind of solid throughout time. I think Lorena is way better than I give her credit for, but I don't like giving Lorena any credit. So, um, there's that. But she is really, really, really weak for Arena. But I do love her for boss killing. We've got our poor girl, Chloe, and honestly, like, I don't even think she's S for boss because so many bosses dispel and then you're just done. Um, and then to combine it up, so many bosses you can't stun on top of that. So, like, her kid is just so confused and maybe it's just um, how bosses are tuned right now, but she is just not in a good place. But Diaria, on the other hand, Diaria at the start of the game, oh my, she was triple S in everything. She was actually OP in every stat. Um, until she got nerfed. So I actually think they had her um, underrated at this point. But obviously, uh, she's basically useless now. The last time I saw her used was when somebody accidentally left them on their defense after the uh, recall time. Uh, oh, God. And then we see Corvus here. And Corvus is one of the most ridiculous units in the game at this point, especially in Guild Wars. He's just 
unstoppable. And I say especially Guild Wars, but like everything. Bosses too. He's just a one man, just masonating machine, just absolutely OP. But back then, um, nobody ever used him. I think I tried him out once on like an alt up to five star and it just was useless. Um, kind of same with Pergus. He's in the same spot. Um, don't really know what to say about him. Are there even C ranks? Like, yeah, nobody even gets C. It just goes down to B. It's so weird. Um, but what's really funny here is seeing Dark Corvus here at the bottom of the list. Actually, no. I see somebody else at the bottom of the list. Dark Corvus almost at the bottom of the list where he's like one of the best units in the game right now. And for a lot of potential PvE content, he will be the best for that too, like we saw with TOA 100. Um, so, oh, times have changed for Dark Corvus. Used to be a big ol' left, but now he's pretty much one of the most wanted units. Cartuja's kind of just happily sitting there at the bottom doing nothing like um, Cartuja always does. And then we have Ken. Wow, did Ken get some changes. It's so funny seeing him down here. I have um, a couple friends, specifically Kinetic. I remember um, loving Ken and loving Krau so much. And Ken just was not good back then, but they didn't care. And um, that makes me happy when people stick to stuff like that and get rewarded for it. Because Ken is just an absolute monster now. Um, and again, I, I think those two options, Dark Corvus and Ken, are, are something that really shows that I, I don't really like to follow tier lists at the start of the game right now. Because of um, so many things change, you know? And so many different things happen. And people who play games from another area like Korea have different visions and different thoughts of somebody than we do here. Uh, so that makes a big impact on tier lists. And I think like basing it on that, like taking um, taking Corvus at the start of the game because he's S minus in arena um, versus Ken is just not something anybody should ever do. Um, and then Dingo being Dingo, as always, Dingo is uh, pretty good at being at the bottom. Ah, uh, then we have the best mage in the game, Tenebria. S plus in Arena. I don't even remember anybody using her. Um, I remember how hyped she was at the start of the game, and then I never saw anybody use her. Basically, zero people. I never saw her in PvE. I never saw her in PvP. Um, maybe it's just because she was so much harder to get than any other character. Uh, we then have Bale and Sasan ranked above Araminta. Are you crazy? Um, are you absolutely crazy? He uh, is basically nowhere right now. Uh, he's kind of just in his sage form, of course. And then Araminta. And looking at this list, it makes me realize how hard mages had it at the beginning. Because these are not very good units. Like, none of them, to be honest. Araminta, I think, is the best of these. And she's still not good at all, really. S plus in arena is actually really funny. Um, I did use her a lot at the start in arena and just getting one AOE off with her would just decimate the enemy team. It was so funny when things like that were actually a viable strategy. Like I didn't even have a booster. I just like tanked with Araminta and then used my skill three and killed them. And it just like, it's so funny how times have changed now. Um, Basar I think is like worse than this. I don't think he was ever S in arena at all. Uh, Carmen Rose, surprisingly good. I think she's underrated. I think she was actually better in Arena than this. Like, I think she was better than a lot of those in Arena. Um, Roman, support, Lats. Uh, he had an early S rank in Arena. Okay, so he did get a little bit of love way back when. It's just not very much. Um, who else is here? Spectre Tenebria, also known as Tenebria of Illusions. Um, B plus in Arena. This is when she was a poisoner of sorts. So it's really funny to see that her kit entirely changed. Like she got an entirely new um, skill set. So it's fun to see her here too. I still remember the person uh, we did an account mentor for that foddered their Spectre Tenebria because they looked at the in-game rankings and she was rated bad. Um, so they foddered her. Yep, that happens. Uh, Vagrant Ether. Nice. Uh, okay, the rest are kind of just like subpar, as we can see. Ludwig at the bottom, as expected. Dominial kind of down there, too. Um, all of these, like, looking at the initial mages we had, none of these are really good. Like, there is um, Support Lots, who's a, a, one of the best mages in the game, but he's not a mage in the sense that you kind of think mages are. He's more of, like, a support character. And same with Tenebra. She's also amazing, but she feels more like a rogue than a mage, on, on, almost. 
Um, so maybe that means mages needed a little bit of a change and that's why they wanted to do the dizzy thing, but who knows? And everybody remembers this one. Just re-roll for Sez. That's all you need. He's OP in world, guys. Just re-roll for Sez. Just re-roll for him. OP in world. How can you go wrong? Um, so funny seeing that here. Also funny seeing A. Kali. I never really saw her used at all. And then BBK here too. Ah, oh, I love these things. Just seeing people. Um, but she's only A plus in arena though. She's really meant for world. Uh, and then there's Executioner Vildred. Uh, S plus and arena. I remember him back then. He just wasn't really good. Uh, and he turned absolutely insane. There's Karin there too for boss. I mean, that kind of makes sense. Um, we have Cedar, also known as Sid. He was actually really good for bosses back then. And he was actually really good for world. I remember uh, people were building Sid just to be able to really if the hiccups reliably kill banshee or not banshee um world 49 for uh blazing souls what a funny day that was um let me have vildred all the way down here i love how he's like ninth and he's still s rank um kind of funny like this is the other thing like how do you distinguish between these things that's why i really like like if i'm looking at tier lists like this i really like numbers and explanations like i like a number out of 10 um in each area and I like explanations to really like read about why people think these things um, and we can kind of expect the same any outliers Kali being Kali unfortunately one day don't worry we'll run with each other to the end of the world together one day and healer class this is gonna be um, actually a pretty funny one for the people who weren't familiar with how the game was at the start Elson was our boy, right? Like, Elson was just the best. He was the best unit ever, um, combined with a couple of the best units ever, like Tiaria there. Uh, absolutely insane. And he got blown to bits uh, by a nerf down to the ground. And everybody al already had Destina, but they used Elson over Destina or Elson and Destina. Um, I used both, actually, because everybody was told to reroll for Sez and Destina at the start of the game. Um, and then the rest. There's lots of Acades and Shooting Star Acades here. Um, I've never actually really seen anybody use these three outside of Loth used Acades, and that was it. Then we have Ling down at A+, Montmorency down at A+, and finally Angelica all the way down here, um, which is kind of weird because even the Korean community, I remember, it was really on about Angelica. They they were saying Angelica is the best healer in the game, and um, yet this tier list doesn't say that, which is kind of funny. And then, most importantly, down there with Aether and Heisel is Ruel of Light. <laughs> I love tier lists. They just make me so happy. Um, but this one, this one's another confusing one from way back when. We have Silk, number one. I still remember the start of the game, like, your goal at the start of the game was um, re-roll for Sez, re-roll for Destina, and then farm up Silk, because Silk was just that good. Uh, there was a point where every single team you fought in Arena had Silk on them, and because you were fighting water units when we were farming at the start of the game, Silk was also, like, especially insane for that. So, um, Silk fell off really quickly, but she did what she did in her, like, time she was here really well. She was really farmable, too. I remember spending like I don't know like people were coming to me I've been farming this this stupid badge for an hour and it hasn't dropped yet and little did they know what they were in for in the future um, so that's really funny too we have Leo here um, I've never seen anybody use Leo to this day uh, we have Isaria unfortunately all the way down here she had an A in arena and honestly that was pretty much true back then. There was no Tamarin to really make her useful, but we knew she was going to be better. As soon as you see somebody reset skills like this, you know. You know something's going to come out and she's going to be OP because of it. Uh, and that definitely boosted her way up now, and I think she's one of the better selective choices because of that. And then we have Yuna. Yuna, I brought her back out recently. I've been using her in Guild Wars and Wyvern farming, and I miss her. She did so well at the start of the game. 
Like if you're really interested to see how she performed, you should really take a look at my starter videos for this game when it first came out and like look at my abyss clears and stuff. Yuna was really great. She uh, carried quite a bit. She had a speed buff, which was just so, so important back then. I really, really liked her. And then, of course, we have uh, Shuri, Kyrus, and Beholder Shuri. Uh, Shuri was actually like triple S way back when. Um, pretty much the best you could get for bosses. Pretty much the best you could get for Arena. And pretty much the best you could get for Abyss back then. So this actually has him way lower rated than I think he was back then. Um, and Wander Silk, way down there, like Wander Her Silk should be. Um, so wow, that was actually really, really fun. It's good to see this. They're actually missing a couple of people here. That was one thing I noticed was not all of these had everybody. Like this list is missing um, Rickerus, who was basically triple S up here too at the start of the game. Um, because at the start of the game, we had a hard time living through stuff with our gear. So the combination of Rickerus, uh, Falconer, Clurry, I think at the time, I can't remember, Tiaria, Elson, and then another one. I forget who. Um, you guys are going to slap me for that, but it's been so long. I never had Rickerus, so I never really got to um, complete the, the, the cycle and group of people. But it was just absolutely insane what they could do. Just infinite turns, infinite damage through jokers and stuff. Absolutely insane. Anyways, this was really fun. Um, if you have any questions, if you have any thoughts, if you like tier lists, if you were playing the game back when this started and you follow this tier list, let me know in the comments below how it screwed your game up and what you took and why. Um, because me personally, I re-rolled and I don't, like for anybody that's watched me re-rolled, I don't look at tier lists. I don't care about them. I re-roll for waifu or who I think is going to be good. I ended up getting um, Destina and Sez at the time at 1-4 who are the two people that um, everybody was told to re-roll for. And I was kind of sad about that, you know? Like, I didn't want Sez. I remember opening up with Destina and getting another five-star and being like, anybody but Sez, anybody but Sez, and it ended up being Sez. Um, so that was really sad here. And then from my selective, I took Araminta, and I still remember. It's like one of my most remembered moments in streaming for some reason. And we had just a ton of Korean people. Um spamming or people speaking korea spamming the chat telling me how bad the game was and like how bad araminta was and i'm an idiot for taking araminta and um it was just so funny that she shaped the way this game turned out for me and uh i'm so thankful that i took her because i think she made this game so much more fun for me and i'm so so glad i didn't listen to other people i'm also as i say that noticing we're missing crow right yeah, there's no Crow on this list either, which is kind of unfortunate. I'd love to see where they put him here. Uh, so anyways, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe as always, and I'll talk to y'all later. Have a wonderful day. Bye, everybody.